All right, NBA power rankings, because we got some other good stuff to get to today. Um, the absolute positive worst team in the NBA right now is the mm. – I think it's the Pistons. The Pistons mm. are terrible. And they're, they're going to trade Jeremy Grant. I have to believe they're going to trade Jeremy Oh, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, they are a bad team. But, man, Kate Cunningham's been a nice story. Yeah. Dude, yep. guy's a stud. And he's got a great fro. He's got awesome hair. Um, Detroit's bad. I mean, let's be honest. It's Detroit, OKC, and Houston. But I think Houston is so athletic. Yeah. And their young guys are really good. You, I mean, you're watching their young guys. Kenya Martin Jr., Stud. I'm telling you, the kid's coming. Stud. Um, you know, like you you look at the you look at Christian Wood. Um, if they unload John Wall, I think the sky's the limit for them. And they I sh- think they will. They, they will. should do the Russell Westbrook buyout trade from the Lakers and send John Wall. Yeah. Um, because I think that's absolutely him and Eric Gordon have huge value around the league. Eric Gordon, I think, is the number one three point percentage shooter in the NBA right now. Yeah. Um, I would trade him and John Wall and go. You, you you need to sell out on Christian Wood. Build everything you have around him and and I think, um, you know, I I really like Christian Wood. I know there's people who've talked about trading him. I would not. No, I, I think you have a good core there. You, they just need to play more. You yeah, need time. And then OKC. I mean, I look at what Josh Giddy's giving OKC. But he can play, dude. I mean, he is he is under the radar as under the radar gets, but he can play. Better or worse, the Sacramento Kings. Or the New Orleans Pelicans? Oh, the Sacramento Kings are better. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, Zion Williamson obviously hasn't played. He's an incredible bust. I just think the Pelicans don't have a... I mean, outside of out of uh, outside of Ingram, you know, you look at this team, and yeah, you've got Zion who's hurt. You know, long, obviously... Jackson you know, Hayes? You, yeah, mm, I don't like Jackson Hayes' off-the-court, you know, issues, if you will. What if they make that C.J. McCollum trade? Then I think you've got something because you can put you're not you're not a championship contender at that point, but I definitely think you're a playoff team, uh, a legit no doubt about a playoff team. I think Brandon Ingram's their best player. They're two and twenty without him. I mean that's a and I think I think too CJ McCollum. It would be fun to see him being the number one on a team just to see what what that would do for him. You know he's right. been Dame's running mate forever. So I'm going to say Detroit's the worst. Yeah, I'm going to say that Houston's the second worst. Yeah, OKC. New Orleans, and then better or worse, the Sacramento Kings or the Orlando Magic. I watched the Orlando Magic game the other night with the Bulls. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're talented as talented gets. They're just not a smart basketball team. No, they make boneheaded plays pretty consistently. So I'm going to say they're the fifth worst team. I'll put the Kings. I'll put the Kings outside of the bottom five. Yeah. And then, you know, there's the top five, and I have no idea. I mean, I think in the NBA right now, there's no doubt one, two is Phoenix. And I think the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the NBA. I think Devin Booker is, you know, I, I, I we, think. We know, we know what you think about Book. We know. Yeah, I mean, it, and imagine I will punch you in the face. <laughs> uh, imagine if the, if the Suns trade Dario Saric's contract. Yeah, I, I think so. The Suns nine are gonna million make moves. bucks. The Suns are going to make moves. They're going to get better, you know. But I, but yeah, in terms of of the top five teams, I think it's really tough once you get past the four best teams. So you've got the Suns, eh, is the Warriors. Yeah, I think it, I think, I think it Suns is. one, Warriors two. This nonsense, like you know, the list you have there. This nonsense about the Sixers being a top five team. They're in the not. League. They're not a top five team in the league. I, but see, the argument's going to be Memphis. Yeah, oh, the, I think to Memphis me, is top five. I think Memphis is the third best team in the NBA right now. Today, the way they're playing, I think Memphis is the third best team. What do in you the think NBA. of the Bucks right now? Where are you at on the Bucks? They're fourth. I put. I would take. I think. I think Memphis. Their their athletic ability on offense trumps what Milwaukee can do defensively. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing is, I don't think that Giannis has a matchup that he can lock a guy down against Memphis because Memphis doesn't play big. You know, Memphis is much more about Jared their Jackson their Jr. wings. Was shooting it last night, bro. But that's my point. If you, it, it, okay, so let's say it's Giannis versus Jaron Jackson Jr. Where's Giannis going to be in that matchup? Well, he's going to be at the top of the circle. Yeah. So what does that do for John Morant? Yeah, I mean, it opens things up for sure. I I think yeah. But what is John Morant doing? So in in this is this is what I was thinking about. If you have 
Memphis versus Milwaukee head to head, let's say in a series. You have you have Ja off the off the ball. Off the ball. Yep. Jaron's got the ball at the top. He's going to kick that ball to Ja Morant. Then what's going to happen? Ja's going to drive. Giannis Ante your mama is going to drop back to try and rim protect. And what's Ja going to do? Yeah. He's going to kick because Ja Morant his his highlight tape is going to be all these dunks and stuff. His best ability right now, and the reason they're the third best team in the NBA right now, is because he's passing really well. I'm going to say this again. He is an all-around player. John Morant is fun to watch. Mm -hmm. That's an entertaining team to watch. I'm for real. I take Memphis third. I put Milwaukee fourth. And then I think it's a crapshoot for the, for the fifth spot. I mean, I think I could make an argument for Brooklyn, but I don't think so. I think with all of this James Harden nonsense – I don't think so. Uh, I could make. I absolutely can make an argument for the Chicago Bulls, but they're so injured. I don't think so. The Nets have to be a top five team. I. They I, have to be. Uh, okay. Are you talking so, about? Are you talking about? Are we saying from the standpoint of right here today? Right here like, today. Yeah. I, I think mean, right the. I today, think it's. Yeah. I. I do think it's Cleveland. It's Miami, and I also think that that the Boston Celtics are moving up into that that ten to seven range now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, they're getting Jalen. I'm telling you, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are playing really well right now. Yeah, you know, I, I think they are. I think the difficult thing that I have with this right now is that, yeah, with Kevin Durant being out, the Nets are obviously not a top five team. I mean, they need Kevin Durant. Yes. Just not, there's just no way around that. So, yeah, sure, okay, we'll throw them out of the top five for now. I think it's the you Heat know. and the Cavs, 5-5A. Five and five A. I like the Bulls over both of those teams, just so we're clear. The Bulls are just too injured. And I I think when you – and the other thing is, look, obviously I'm a Bulls fan. I'm from Chicago. But um, I look at the Bulls right now, and I I just think that the the way the Bulls are playing without Alex Caruso, without Lonzo Ball, they're missing. They're They're missing tenacity at guard. Yeah. And I think that's why the the Brunson, the the, the, – the Jalen Brunson and the oh my God former Jazz man Brooklyn Net um, Paul Millsap those two names yeah are supposed to be Chicago Bulls now the the Mavericks are saying that they're not trading Brunson I think that's a mistake yeah and I think Paul Millsap would fit right in with what the Bulls are doing especially defensively because they don't need him offensively and he's rested they need yeah exactly they need a rebounding defender who can play two, three positions. Because the biggest problem for Chicago Bulls right now is they are small. Yeah, they are. Wendell Carter tortured them the other night. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you right now, Lonzo Ball, I love the guy, but he, he in his career, he can't stay healthy. And if you're going to have consistent knee issues, which he's got, your value plummets. And Alex Caruso, they've got to find a way to keep him healthy. Now, it was a dirty play that broke his wrist. That's not his fault. He'll be back in April. Thanks. It's not his fault. But good God, he's been out, it feels like, for three months. Yeah. And when Alex Caruso's healthy, that team defensively, completely different team. Yeah. Like, he can, he can lock down one through three. It doesn't matter. Like, what he did to Luka Doncic early in the year, anybody Thanks. see, again, and I know I'm the only crazy idiot, everybody says this to me, that I got, to- like, all these Maverick fans came into the comments yesterday on, on YouTube, but I'm telling you, Luke is not a, a winning player. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the guy last night just simply fell asleep on defense and gave up a game tying layup to send the game to overtime. It's a terrible game. mistake. And what does he do? He grabs the ball, he puts it on his forehead. Oh, I feel terrible. Oh, <laughs> loser. Yeah, and then Lou Dort tortured you in overtime, too, to boot. Spinal. Luke is not a championship player. My question is, where do the jet, where do the Jazz fall into this list? I mean, I think the Jazz are solidly in the top half of the NBA, but right now today, I'm, I'm taking the Nets, I'm taking the Celtics, I'm probably taking the Hornets. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I look at I look at Atlanta. Eh, the Jazz are better than Atlanta. What about the Minnesota Timberwolves? I can't definitively say the Jazz are better than them right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I think today, right now, today. Yeah, right now, today, they're not. Okay, without Rudy and without Don. And, you know, it's a little surprising Clarkson and Hassan. Oh, my back hurts. Yeah, sure. Okay. When, when When everybody's equal, the Jazz are better than the Timberwolves. 
but it's not by a lot. I'm telling you, it's not by a lot. In the middle of the pack, what do you say about the New York Knicks? Yeah, I think the Knicks are a bit of a disappointment. But, you know, I mean, last night, again, they were on national TV last night on ESPN against the Grizzlies, and I thought that they made a lot of silly mistakes. And I think that they're, you know, again, I I love Julius Randle and what he did in that run where he was hot, but I just, he's not performing right now. He's not doing what they need him to do. And and there's a lot of turnovers and a lot of silly plays happening. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I I think one of the interesting things to me is that you have people – that want the Knicks to trade Julius Randle, that have people that want them to trade Evan Fournier. And I'm telling you, you trade Julius Randle, okay, I get that. But if you trade Evan Fournier, you don't have a shot taker on that team. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I just don't think you have a a shot taker on that team. The two guys I'd move from the Knicks very clearly are Kemba. Um, And I don't know where that guy's career's gone since he left Charlotte, but it is what it is. I, I would move Julius and Kemba. Yeah. Um, and I think Alec Burks, by the way, has some value on that on that roster as well. But um, I don't think much of the I don't think much of the Lakers because they haven't shown the ability to stay healthy. And until they make a trade, I think they're bottom half. Yeah, agreed. I All think right. the Knicks are bottom half. Westbrook can say that it, you know they just got to get in. And it's in your 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 zero for zero. You know you're zero and zero. Everyone's even when you get into the postseason. But yep. right now, I just I I, I don't know. What's going to fix you shooting the, the ball off the backboard the way you do consistently? What's going to fix AD not being able to stay healthy? I mean, what's going to fix these issues? So, you know. The Celtics are so frustrating to watch. Like, just, I mean, they, that should be a 50 win team. Mm-hmm. That should be a team that really wins pretty much every game they play in. And they just don't, like, they just go to sleep sometimes. Yes, they're a chill team. Like, That's they, always yeah. Been their vibe. Yeah, like, they, they're, there's a lack of intensity. And it's so frustrating because Jason Tatum is just so incredibly talented. And then he'll do shit like throw the powder bottle last night. That like I, I they're so frustrating. The the Boston Celtics are so and and the other thing I'm waiting for is what's going on with Indiana and Washington? Are you gonna trade Dinwiddie? I you you said in the vaunted pre show meeting where we talk about absolutely nothing. Behind the scenes. Um, you were saying that you think they're they're giving him run to trade him. Oh, they're definitely feeding him. Yeah, they're definitely trying to up his trade value. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, he has a big time triple double last night because they're giving him more opportunities, you know, and even when he's not uh what was it? Uh what's today? Thursday on Tuesday. Uh, I can't remember who they were playing. I believe it was Tuesday or might have been Monday, but they're in this game and I'm I'm watching them. And, and and he's he's like missed his first six three point attempts. You go into the second half and they're just feeding him, like giving him the ball. Kuzma is deferring to him intentionally to give him more opportunities. And How I'm about just saying, Kuzma with another block shot last night? Yeah, li- listen, I'm not a huge Kyle Kuzma guy, but you have to give the guy credit. He's definitely taken a step forward in his career uh, after leaving the Lakers and getting that opportunity. So more power to you, dude. Yeah, I agree.